For TraderInsight.com, I'm Adrian Manz, and it's time for your daily dose of the doctor. This video is going to be a little different than some of the strategy-based videos that you are used to seeing here every day. This one is in response to a question from Brett. Brett's my new best buddy because he's asking the question I think everybody should be asking, and that's how do you go through, evaluate your trading, and decide what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing. So let's have a look at how I analyze my results this is for the core portion of the around the horn trading plan only. So if you're on that daily income trader trading plan, what you know by now is there's a section called the around the horn trades. Those are the ones that we report and we report only those trades because they are the most objective, most replicable portion of the plan. There is no discretion in these trades whatsoever. We know the entry point, we know the stop loss, we know the profit target, and we know all the money management routines that go along with it. So we know, for instance, that when we get 50% of the distance to the profit target, we move our stop to break even. When we get 10 cents of the profit target, we move our stop to the 50% level. And when we get to the profit target, for the purposes of booking these trades, we never book an extension. We always assume we took all the shares off right at that profit target. So even if we got an extra dollar per share on the trade, we don't report it here. That's because we want it to be completely, completely replicable, a no-brainer that you can set up on autopilot and have your machine trade for you without any intervention whatsoever. So let's have a look right now at how I book these trades and analyze my results. And remember, this does not include the stocks to watch portion of the trading plan, does not include the radar portion of the trading plan, does not include the NASDAQ scalper portion of the trading plan, and it doesn't include any of those discretionary trades that we talk about here each and every day. So here are what my core analytics look like. This is an Excel spreadsheet. I've got these records all the way back to 2006. If you are a member of the Daily Income Trader Trading Service or you're trying it out, you've got access to all these spreadsheets right there on the service download page. So all you need to do is rather than downloading it from the email that you receive each night, log into TraderInsight.com, go to your members area, and you'll see all this stuff there for you to go through. Now take a look at this. I book every single trade that was on the trading plan for every single day that there was a trading plan. If you're trading those around the horn setups, you know that the rules call for a first entry and a second entry. So if the first entry goes to the profit target and reverses, comes back to the entry price, we take a second entry. If the first entry goes to the stop loss and reverses, we take a second entry at the entry level as well. So what you see on the left side here are all those entries and all those patterns for the month of January. So we know exactly how many switch hitter patterns there were, how many fastball patterns there were, how many triggered once, how many triggered twice. Then if you move to the right side of the sheet, you'll see how many potential trades there were on each day in January. Working under the assumption of an equal dollar allocation to each one of the setups, you'll see here what the share size would be. So we see that on a day where we have three trades, we would be looking at share sizes of roughly 340, 317, and 222. Of course, you're gonna round those, you're not gonna do odd lots, but then look to the left. What we see for each day that there was a trading plan is what the asset allocation profitability was. So we see the days that we lost money. We see the days that we made money. We see how many trades there were on a day that we made money. And we can go through and really start doing some pretty neat analytics based on all this. Now, if you move further over to the right, what you see are these pie charts and these pattern distributions. The pattern distribution refers to the number of times I found a particular pattern during a month. The reason I'm monitoring this is I want to know if I'm developing a selection bias in the way that I'm setting up my trades. So the higher the level of specificity in what you're putting together in these spreadsheets, the more insight you can get into what's happening in your trading. So in my case, I see, well, I've got a little bit of a skew towards this fastball pattern, and that's 19 times it's represented in the month of January as a possible setup. Now, that doesn't worry me because that is the core trade. The expansion of range and volume is the core trade in my trading business. So I expect that thing to be a little bit more heavily weighted in the pie chart, all the way up to about 50% of the distribution for any given month on the setups. I've got six infield flies, five line drives, no 3-2 pitch, no backdoor slider, 11 switch hitters, two double headers. 
knowing my trading system the way that I know it, I know that this is a fairly typical month for the around the horn trading plan. Now we look at the triggered pattern distribution and we see that 15 of those expansion of range and volume setups, 15 of the fastballs triggered over the course of January. Two of the infield flies, one of the line drives, three switch hitters, and one double header. The representation of the patterns once they trigger an entry for the session remains just about what we saw in the pattern distribution of setups. And what that tells me is I have not introduced a selection bias into what I'm doing. I'm not cherry picking them. I'm picking the best setups and going and letting those setups roll through and make their move around the horn through the liquidity cycle. This gives me a very good indication that I'm on the right track. But now I need to take a look even deeper into my data. The pattern profitability needs to make sense in terms of how often those patterns presented and how often those patterns triggered. We look here and we see that that fastball expansion of range and volume represented the lion's share of the profits in the month of January. That makes sense because that's the pattern that had the highest frequency of presentation in the daily selection process. Going through, we see infield fly has just about the same representation in terms of percentage of profitability as it did in percentage of presentation, as do line drive, switch hitter, and double header. We see that in January, we had 13 winners, 6 losers. We had a gross of 3.84 points per share, so $3.84 for every share traded. And if we go down and look at this asset allocation based on various account sizes, what we see is that we had a 6% gain in the month of January. Winners to losers in our pie chart of overall profitability are very, very strong and no scratch stops for the month. So we didn't have any of those zero stop outs for the money management rules. That's okay because January is a very strong month and we don't really expect to see them there typically. We also have an analysis of how many long entries there were versus how many short entries we had for the month. We see there were far more shorts, 18 shorts versus four longs. What does that represent in terms of profitability? Once again, we see that the short side profitability far outweighs the long side profitability for the month. And that tells me again that there was no selection bias in this. We know that the shorts were favored in the trading plan for the month. And what we don't want to see here is that very few long trades represent as much in profitability as a bunch of short trades. So if you have a lot of shorts, you want to see that the profitability on the short side really, really overwhelms the profitability on the long side. And if you had a lot of long trades, you want to see the same kind of a thing. The only time you want to see these two bars equal is in a month where you have 15 long trades and 15 short trades or 20 long trades and 20 short trades. Then it makes sense that your long to short profitability should be relatively equal. So that's how I do the bookkeeping intra month. And you can see that for each and every month the plan was published, we've got all those same statistics. You can see what the profit potential of the plan was for various amounts of leverage, for various account sizes. We see that in February, we were up 3.3%. In March, we were up 3%. In April, we were up 4%. And so far in May, we're up 7.156%. Then we can also move over, see what happened in any given quarter of the year, or take a look at our year summary. So for the year so far, we see we had 98 fastball setups, 34 infield flies, 8 line drives, 3-2 pitch showed up 11 times, backdoor slider 15, switch hitter 37 times, double header 25, and sinker once. Move down, we see how many times they triggered, and we see that the percentage of triggers is roughly corresponding to the percentage of times that something presented. So you had 98 fastball setups, 56 of them triggered. 34 infield fly setups, 17 of them triggered. 8 line drives, 3 triggered. 11 of the 3-2 pitch setups, 4 of them triggered. 15 backdoor sliders, that one triggered 8 times. 37 switch hitters, 17 triggers. 25 double headers, 12 triggers, 1 sinker, no trigger go down to the pattern profitability and we see exactly how they're doing for the year so far. Infield fly hasn't done so well, that's okay because we're making it up other places, line drive, same thing. But all the other patterns have been profitable over the course of the year. $7.66 per share traded. And if we move down to the asset allocations, we see that for the year, the around the horn trading plan is up 23.57%. That's for the core portion of the plan only. If you add all the other components of our trading business into this, 
you wind up with a number almost four times that high. So I hope that answers your question, Brett, because that was definitely a good one. I don't see that kind of thing too often. Most people just want to know more about setups, and really this bookkeeping stuff is not the most exciting thing in the world, but it is probably one of the most important components of your trading business. It's going to keep your head in the game, and it will definitely keep you in position to profit from your strategies. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the way that I trade and the way that I run my trading business, heck, if you'd like to learn everything about the way that I trade and how I run my trading business, why don't you take a look at our boot camp in Chicago? It's from June 21st through June 24th. It is going to be a live event with full day sessions of all the strategies that I trade, exactly what it is that I'm looking for when I set these things up, what it is that I'm looking for in terms of market dynamics over the course of the day. We're going to be together eight hours a day in that room going through the trades, trading them live with real money. And by the time you leave there, I'm going to say I will have taken the mystery out of what it is that I've done for a living for the past 17 years and put you on the road to being a successful trader yourself. If you have any questions, shoot me an email, adrian at traderinsight.com. I hope you guys found this video useful. It's the best trader education anywhere, only from traderinsight.com.